Hey guys, welcome to this week's hardware video. The Amiga CD32. Definitely one of my favourite consoles. And with its expansions that I have, probably my favourite Amiga. There is one area though that it is left a little bit wanting still, and that is this. The CD32 joypad. This thing gets a fair bit of stick online for, well, being uncomfortable and ugly. I think it is fairly comfortable though. I would disagree on, on that point that it fits my hands well. And, well, maybe I'm just used to playing with it, but all the buttons are in easy reach. D-pad, shoulder buttons. I quite like the layout of it. But I will agree with everyone else and say that the buttons themselves are not particularly satisfying to use. And the D-pad, well, it's just a bit of a mushy mess, if I'm honest. So today, what we're going to do, or what we're going to try to do, is sort that out. Today we're going to try and play with some switches. Let's see if we can make the CD32 joypad nice and clicky. So, the plan today is to try and replace the rubber domes in here with little momentary switches. The first thing we'll just do is take this apart. There's three screws here, two here, and two here. Right, there's the CD32 Joypod circuit board. It is relatively straightforward. Uh, look at this here, something's broke loose. Well, we'll have a look at that later. Right, we need to get the board out, so there's two screws holding it in place. Okay. So, just to show you how these work, as standard anyway, you have like these two interconnecting forks here on each button. So when you push the button, the carbon pad on the bottom gets pushed down onto them, makes contact, creating the circuit, and that's your button press. The issue though is that these things have just pretty much no feeling in them. These things on the other hand have a very satisfying Click. Clicky clicky. So what we're going to do is try and mount these on here. I think these are about the same size as the as these uh, existing domes. Let's just see. You see they're roughly the same size. So the button travel should be the same. There is uh, various different sizes switches in here, so I'll have a wee play with that while we're going. So we'll do away with that. We mount this on here, and then when you push the button, clicky. So I've been trying to think about the easiest way to mount this. And I reckon it might actually be best to try and treat this as if it were like a surface mount. So what we'll do is we'll take the wee switch like this. And we're going to bend the legs down that way. Just like that. And like that. Then, you see these two uh, traces running this way. Here. And here. I think that is the perfect place to solder that on like that. What could possibly go wrong? Right, so that's one done. Worked out quite well. Let's do the other three. So just a wee bit of hot goo in the middle. That'll do. Make sure to put this on the right way around. Oh, 
I do dislike working with hot glue, but in this situation, I think needs must. Okay, then we just put a wee bit of flux on each side just to help the solder float. Right, let's see if we can get this one on and do it on camera. Try and do this one right handed. Right, hopefully that's it. Let's try and get another wee bit on this side. Yeah, that's better. Flowed well that time. Again, these would be good. It's a little bit hot. Right, let's just test these first of all to make sure we haven't got any shorts before we go any further. Got our meter on continuity. And what we should not have is any contact between there and there. Perfect. Now push the button. Perfect. Let's try this one. Yep. Working fine. So I'll get these other two done. And then what we'll do is test it just with the buttons first before we go any further. Right, so things are never as simple as you would hope. I uh, put it together and the switches were sitting too high. So the way we had it earlier, the surface mount with the legs bent underneath, obviously had these sitting up too high. So when it was put together, all the buttons were just pushed down. So, I've uh, took, took them all off and I put these three back on again. So what we've done is bent the legs out this time and I've just scratched a wee bit of the finish off this here, the green here, just to expose the copper underneath just to get, so I can solder it on. They're nice and secure there, they're not going anywhere. So we'll just do this one up here. I'll take a switch off and I'm going to take this uh, two blobs of solder off so we'll just use a bit of the, the wick for that. There we are. I'll leave it there. Right, that's how it sorted. Now, where's the switch going? There's the switches here, so I'm just bend these legs out. Trying to get this hot glue off the bottom of this. Oh, I do really dislike this rubbish. We'll do it this time without any hot glue. Right, so all I've been doing is... Well, this one here is actually quite good because there's a wee pod here. I'm getting my finger out of the way. Take this wee pod here. So what we'll do is we'll use that for one of the legs. If it's going to be long enough, is it? Mm, not quite. So I need to scratch off a wee bit of the green just above that and then we'll just scratch off a wee bit up here where those legs are going to solder on so we're just going to take our knife and you just want to do this very gently you're not cutting, you're just scratching there we are And then the other bit we need to do is up there. Right, so we'll just apply a wee bit of solder to those two points.
there and there. And we'll get our switch. And try and get it attached. I have to burn myself in the process. That's fine, I'll tie that up in a second. In fact, the switch looks a wee bit too far over to the left. Yep. That looks a bit better. Right. Tidy this side up a bit. There we are. That's not too bad. Right, I'm gonna put it again, put it together again now. And hopefully the buttons work this time. Okay, so we have the controller back together. Let's have it not screw together, I'll just hold it together. And let's see. Perfect. Nice clicky buttons. Clicky clicky. Right, that's those done. I think the next ones we'll tackle is the shoulder buttons. So, we need something slightly longer this time. Let's have a look in our box of switches. So this is the original wee plunger for the shoulder buttons. And I'm thinking this one here is about the same size. More or less, yep. So we'll just do the same again. We'll be soldering on to... We'll just solder it on to uh, these pads here. Right, so it's given us a bit of thought. And I think this time we'll do it slightly differently. So... We'll get the hot glue out again. Yay. Um, we'll stick this in here, like that. But instead of soldering on in there, what we'll do is we'll run two wee jumper bars from these two pins here from the switch over to this side here and this side here where these two wires are at the minute. Just to make the circuit. Rather than trying to fiddle in here, just because it's so... Uh, Everything's a bit tight in there, just with the way this uh, plastic's moulded and whatnot, so I think that'll be the easiest solution. Yeah, let's give that a go. Okay, so we have our wee switch in the vise there, so the first thing we'll do is just uh, turn up these legs a bit. I'll do. Then we'll have these wee wires. And we're just going to try and attach those. A wee bit of heat shrink over them and just tidy it up. That's not bad. Right. Next thing to do is try and get it in the joy pad. So. That's going to be the best way to do this. Well, actually, we need to remove the two legs on that side, don't we? There. Perfect. So what's going to be the best way to do this? We'll try and mount this like this with the joypad assembled, or we take this out. Probably best to take this out. Maybe we just take this out actually, couldn't we? 
I'm just trying to mount it to that. Right, let's do that. Hot glue. Look at the mess of this. Look. I, I hate working with hot glue. I think there's dribbles all over the place. Maybe I forgot a decent gun, but yeah. Better. Now. One new bit of hot snot. And bring it down. So we'll put a blob of snot in the middle of this. I'm just trying to squidgy this onto it before it dries. Get this stuff. Right. Of course, the downside with doing it this way is that we're actually relying on the hot glue to hold that in place. But well, let's see. That'll be in there like that. Hopefully it won't actually, you know, come under much force to move it. Because it's only really pushing down on it. So the glue the glue should do. Let me just test it for uh, positioning. Seems pretty good. So now we just need to make off these wires onto these pods here on either side. So take that out of there again. Oh crap, buttons are everywhere. In fact, let's just remove that from that. Out of the way. So I just want to bend that around like that, make that off like that, and that should, that should work perfect. We'll just trim that wire down a wee bit. We just need to solder that on there like that. Let me see if I can grab this in the vise. Right, we we'll just need to solder that to there. Simple. Let's put a blob of solder on that. Then we'll just try and push this into position. There we are. That's one side done. Let's do the other side quickly. And then we'll get it back together. Okay, so we have both shoulder buttons done. Clicky, clicky. These four are done. Um, I was having a look there quickly at the start button and I don't think there's going to be anything I can do with it, to be honest. The whole thing is just a big bit of rubber. So, I could possibly like cut a hole out of that. You know, cut a hole into it and then fit the clicky switches in there. But, to be honest, the start button is very, very rarely used on the CD32, so I think for now we'll just leave well enough alone with that. Now, the D-pad though. Oh, so satisfying. Clicky. Right, D-pad. As you can see, I already had problems with this. Two of these two legs on this side have broke off here and here. That's what actually holds the D-pad in position. And you'll often see on the CD32, the pad sitting at a, like a funny angle or something, and it rotates internally, because these have broke off. And when it does rotate like that, it doesn't work. So I do want to try and replace this with the clicky switches, like we've done over here. 
but it's not going to be as simple on this side because all the switches I have are taller than that. Even the smallest switch, this is the one we used under the buttons. As you can maybe see, it's slightly taller than these original wee pods. So we need to have a think. Right, so I might be on to something here. I have the original rubber pod in here. So yeah, it feels horrible. But if we turn this upside down, you can see there's actually a lot of play in that. So while these switches are thicker than the original pod, it may work. Only one way to find out though, we'll have to give it a go. In fact, hold on a second, let me see. So just even put them in upside down for now. But leave a couple of switches in there like that. And try and put this board in. Ah, there still is a bit of play there. Yeah, so this might work. Maybe worrying about nothing. Right. Let's try and get the switches mounted on this. So we'll do it the same way that we wound up doing the buttons. We'll lay the switch flat against the pod and put the wee legs out. Sort of like that. So for that one there, for example, we will probably mount that on an angle like that. Have that. Cut a wee bit of this trace off. Well, you know, you know what I mean, the green, cut it off. Mount that on there. Then that side will expose a wee bit of the copper in this large trace here. And solder that on. That should do. We'll do the same for all four of these. And then we'll be back to test it. Okay, so we have the four switches in here where the D-pads are going to go. So let's try and put it together. And fingers crossed, it works. Let's hold it together like that for now. Seems quite good. Yeah. That's dead on. That seems to be working fine. There's still a wee bit of play on that. That's not sitting tight. Up, down, left, right. The right one's not great, let me see. I wonder does the right hand one need move slightly. It's very hard to judge. That's this one here. It looks to be pretty much in the middle of that pod, maybe slightly to the right. I'll try and move it ever so try and move it ever so slightly to the right. See if that helps it click a wee bit better. Right, we'll do that, and then the last thing to do is fix this cable. So I'm just going to uh, desolder all these, cut this back beyond this uh, where it's split here. Probably cut it back right here somewhere. We're not losing too much of the cable, so we'll do that. Then we'll get it all back together, and then the real test. We'll try it out in a game. Back again shortly. Right, so we have the controller back together. Listen to that. That's how. Oh, it's awesome! Clicky! Very good. Right, let's try Guardian. Guardian's one of those games that uses every button on the joypad, so I thought it would be a good one to try out.
Right, everything seems to be working good so far. Push red. Yep, working good. So let's see if I can control this game with a joypad in front of the camera. This is going to be difficult. Yep, well, everything seems good so far. Right, press green to do a flip. Yep, that works. D-pad. Seems to be working okay. Is the right a wee bit funny? No, that seems okay. Right, where is this thing? Tracking missile. How do we fire tracking missile? I can't remember. Blue. Yep. And yellow is our smart bomb. That worked. I managed to complete the level by uh, exploding myself, as you do. What better game to test than a beat em up? As it requires you to have fast inputs on the D-pad and the buttons to pull off moves. So, we're going to try Fighting Spirit. Let's get into it quickly here. Right, let's see how it plays in a beat em up. Crap, I thought I'd beat him. There, beat him now. Yeah, plays pretty good. Perfect. I am very impressed with how this has turned out. We have nice clicky buttons. We have a nice clicky D-pad. We have nice clicky shoulder buttons. It's just a shame we couldn't do anything with this rubbery mess down here. But as I said earlier, it's not used very much. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up as it really does help the channel please consider subscribing and uh, I'll see you again soon Licky. Oh, so satisfying.